And we are underway from Louisville. At least 90 minutes ahead of us to see who will win a national championship. May start right away. If you recall when Clemson won their championship two years ago, there was a mistake at the back. Isaiah, Isaiah Reed scored within 90 seconds of the match starting. It almost happened here for Notre Dame. Devin and talking to both coaches after last game and even during the game, there was some timidity, some tension, and teams did not play fluid. How do you overcome that? How do you think they deal with that here to start the final now? Well, you certainly want to go out with with a lot of energy, but more importantly, Dallin, just put one foot in front of the other. And that doesn't mean be not on the shot about it. That, you know, it, it's finding a way to go slow, but still be fast. I admit that I think that given the fact that they played earlier this year and they got the cobwebs out in the mm -hmm. semifinal, you should see two teams that are much more confident and open when it comes to the expansion of play in this match. Mitch Ferguson back to Brian Dow, the first team All-American keeper, has to handle it on the back pass and both teams kind of testing with some long balls early not normal for Clemson but Sean Smart on the ball the goal scorer from the semifinal you saw that at the beginning of the show or maybe on Sports Center top 10 it was an absolute cracker of a goal Brandon Parrish on the ball second team all ACC out to freshman Arthur Duquesne Pop our boy third team all ACC center back the freshman from Senegal has been outstanding Smart finds Usman Silla. All Americans got his head up. One of the more creative players in the country. Crowded out by KK Baffour. Still working. Gets it back to Smart. Back to Gael Jaber, the Frenchman, actually scored in the first meeting between Notre Dame and Clemson, a game where the Irish went up 2 0. Clemson came back to equalize, and the Irish won 3 2 behind a Daniel Russo goal. Bay, transfer to Oregon State. Long spell of possession here by Clemson. While they're working the ball back and forth, Devin, let's get your, your keys or AKA your download. And we're going back to the nerves here and it's don't play the occasion, play the game. Sir Alex Ferguson, the coach of Manchester United, you know, it's in college play, I mean, certainly in general, but more so in college play, you worry about yourselves. Control the controllables. Both coaches admitting that in the semifinal, neither team really did that, at least not at the rate that they would like to. So a defensive team in Notre Dame that has the ability to be very impressive moving forward, they just took their chance. They were fortunate, to be honest, to get out of it. Clemson, they moved the ball a little bit more fluidly than Notre Dame did. But this is about trusting the process that has been the entirety of the 2023 campaign. Clemson still in possession. Now an opportunity. Head up is Alex Meinhardt. Pops it out wide to Smart. Smart still skirting forward. Cuts it back. In the end, Josh Ramsey was there to make the interception. Who seems to, I feel like I said that about 80 times on Friday night. We're starting where we picked up. Eight in about five seconds as well. That's true. The tail <laughs> into that Oregon State game. If, if you missed it in the open, he was everywhere. Josh Ramsey on this back line, but good example. We were talking about it coming into this match, Dale, and that it's just one player after the next for the Fighting Irish. Mike Noonan, very well aware of that. Mike Noonan, outstanding career he's had leading up to Clemson and stops at Brown, UNH, and Wheaton before getting the Clemson job, where he's now in his third college cup. He's won the ACC tournament twice and won the NCAA tournament, as we mentioned, in 2021, taking down Washington 2-0 in the final in Cary, North Carolina. Matt Rue, first team all ACC, digs it out, pops it out to Kyle Genenbacher. Daniel Russo on the ball, back to Ethan O'Brien. Again, seven players starting in this Irish team started in that 2021 semifinal game. And Devin, you mentioned the open. Clemson, though, that opening, that first game these two teams had this year was a big turning point. Chad Riley's Notre Dame team beat them at Alumni Stadium. In route to build, that was their first ACC game. They didn't lose all year in, in league play. Getting their first division championship and doing it in an impressive fashion, to say the least. But that Clemson team really thought that was a turning point. This could be an opportunity. Russo got some options in the box and loses it to Duquesne. Excellent job there by Arthur Duquesne working back. One of the unsung heroes for 
this Clemson Tiger squad. Mike Noonan admitting that you know, because of all of the attacking options you have and what has been the recent form of Tyler Trimnell, the transfer from Tulsa. Alex Meinhard, certainly the All-American Usman Silla, kind of gets lost in translation. But a guy, just his freshman year, the Frenchman, they weren't sure what he was going to be for them. They knew that he could play on the outside and could get up and down a little bit, but recruited as an outside back, but the system changed. That was just a couple of games into this season. He's certainly been one of the players that has benefited the most from it. Duquesne, one of three Frenchmen starting for Clemson, Gael Joubert, the other, Jaron Jabe. Back to Joseph Endema, sophomore keeper from Ghana. So it can't handle it. And Jabe will scoop it up. Both teams outstanding defensively in the tournament. 400 minutes played for Notre Dame because of two overtime matches where they won in PKs. They've allowed a goal. That was to Indiana and they quarterfinal matchup. Clemson, four games, four shutouts, four clean sheets. They had six all season. They play it forward, looking to Baffour in the channel, and Jaber trying to catch him. He does, but Baffour's able to cut inside on that right foot. Looks for the big switch. Onside, flag down, shot, and Damo with the save! Called into action early. Part of the greatness that has become this attacking unit for Notre Dame is certainly about depth, but it's the way that they attack going forward. No longer is it this long ball style system, and I love what Chad Riley has done on the outside here. Both KK Befort and Daniel Russo, outside midfielders on their opposite foot. So you've got a, a left footer on the right side, a right footer on the left. The idea to challenge to the interior, but very well done by Russo that he didn't take the space. A player already there just drifting to the backside to allow it to develop. Put it in toward the spot, and whoa. An opportunity there as Patty Burns came flying in. Game seems to, have, seems to have much better flow than when we saw on Friday night already just eight or nine minutes in. That's putting it politely. <laughs> I, sometimes I try to be political, you know, wouldn't diplomatic take that much, here. Would it? Wouldn't take that. <laughs> Again, it's it's one thing when we sit up and you see it. It's another kind of being down in the trenches and talking to both managers. And let's say that Chad Riley was a bit more pleased with his team's performance, though he's also a little bit more even keeled in, in situations as such in the, in the interview room. And I think for Mike Noonan, you just got to recognize he knows how good this team yeah. can be attacking-wise going forward. Duquesne almost trips, but still stays on his feet. Gettenbacher is going to. Usher this to the side. And skips off of Russo and ends up being a Clemson throw. The feet of Tyler Trimnell, touch heavy though, turned over. All the crowd on hand here tonight. Notre Dame, though, students are undergoing exams this week, so the buses that we thought would be brought down, they aren't, but I'm sure a lot of Notre Dame fans are watching at home. There's quite a bit of orange here as well, making the trip over from Clemson, South Carolina. Omar Boy gets it off his foot just in time. Jave looking for Silla in a spot, playing it forward, and Dowd off his line to get it. And guys, you were just talking about the, the Notre Dame soccer fans, and I think we can all agree, storming of Alumni Field on December 2nd will probably go down as one of the best fan moments of college soccer. The Fighting Irish advancing on penalties past the powerhouse Indiana program to send them here, College Cup Louisville, Kentucky. And so we asked some of the players to describe that moment, and I love what Patty Burns said, how amazing it is to see the growth of Notre Dame soccer, specifically across the student body. And guys, we were all college athletes. And when he said that they are fully encompassed with the student body, no separate dining halls, no separate dorms, but that allows them to have special relationships. I think we can all attest to just how rare that is. It's incredibly rare. You were an excellent college athlete, I heard, Marin Astor. You, you were an all-league <laughs> player, right? And she just gave me, gave me a look like I had two heads. So, all SEC attacker, Georgia's finest. Thank you, Dallin. And Devin Kerr, former pro in Germany. And 
I was a chucker. But yes, we all understand. It's pretty weird to not, uh, it's pretty unique, I should say, to be living within the student body, and that creates a, an awesome connection. Booted long by Mitch Ferguson, who's been dealing with an injury, but gets the start again today. Adam Lundergaard heads it back to Joubert. Bay sees Duquesne making that run on the wing. Can he bring it down? He does. Isolated against Gennenbacher. Pops back to him. Maybe a chance to cross. He does have a dangerous left foot. Freshman from France. And there's Todd Yegley, who has helped off the back of his father, Jerry, who's also in there, too, building that IU program. But Todd, unfortunately, he would like to be playing in this game like he has been the last two years playing in at least the College Cup. But obviously, Notre Dame ended that at an alumni stadium. It was a scene that everybody in Notre Dame will remember. A lot of us remember. Their memories will not be as fond. And the NCAA honoring all 25-year champions this year. Todd Yagley knows a thing or two about that, both as a manager and as a player. With there's the godfather, Jerry. There's Pops in there as well. Oh, the legend himself. Six-time national champion. Look at the stars above the, above the IU right there, folks. It blinds the eyes. I can't. <laughs> so many championships there. And as we mentioned, they were in the last two College Cups, the final two years ago against Marshall. Three years ago, excuse me. And that goes out, and it is for a corner. Matthew Rodman. Patty Burns getting his 80th career game here for Notre Dame. And Sean Smart, young fella, his 36th career game, coming off that great goal he had, the difference maker, the game winner in the semifinal. Comes from one of the best teams in the country, generating corners, about 7.3 a game, good for fifth in the nation. Jubei is short. If they play him or put it into the box. Back post. Oh, first time strike. Deflects just wide. Silla almost had an absolute highlight right there. Or the nerve just to even try it, to be fair, the way it comes off. And watch him readjust his body right here. Steps back, then right through it. Beautifully taken. This thing's headed to the upper corner on the right hand side. Drifting away and. Whether he meant it or not, perfect positioning by Gennenbacher. Great flop block by Gennenbacher. Ball played in again here. Not cleared clearly. Smart. Was he up to do it again? Tries. Did not come off this time. Sean Smart was funny the other day because we asked him about playing Notre Dame again, and given that they lost, they lost him earlier in the year, and he started smiling. You could see that, like, would you want to play Notre Dame on the other side of the bracket? <laughs> And he said, no, just, you know, we, one game at a time. He gave, the, he gave the diplomatic answer, but in his face and everything in him was saying, yes, we want the Irish again. Gael Joubert had a very similar look on his face. Credit to all the young men. They said all the right things, yeah. but they got what they wanted. The athletic side stood out, and, and you could see the pride really showing through. And then the, uh, the diplomatic Mike Noonan, I'm paying attention side said, boys, <laughs> he's up on the answers here. Smart there, Trimley lays it off, too. Burns. Incredible young men, though. And, oh, and yeah. just not just from Clemson, but you know, Notre Dame and obviously the, the other two College Cup entries that were Oregon State and West Virginia, really taken back, to be honest. And, and this is one of the great things about our job is it's not a bird's eye view. We are right there with them, getting an opportunity to experience what their lives are like on a daily basis. And you know, whether it's exams, growth from early on in the season that were struggles, a Notre Dame team that's just they know they're good and they didn't have the greatest season last year mm -hmm. to get to have the opportunity to chat with all of them. Yeah, you mentioned the greatest season. Those guys had a lot of talent coming back from that 21 squad. They went to the semifinals, as we've talked about a few times. They didn't make the tournament last year. So they, they talked about the embarrassment of that, the reasons for that. I don't say to Patty Burns, it's clear, it's unacceptable. So here they are again, where they expect to be. Charging forward. Meinhardt wanted a handball, not going to get there. Smart able to cut it back. Nobody there, and then Ferguson has to pop it up over the line. This actually develops from Clemson's ability 
just in between these two different levels here for Notre Dame. They're a little bit flat defensively, and so the back line to the middle, good job by Clemson. It started with Brandon Parrish, but as they recycled, Jerron Jabe just stepping up through. Long ball on the backside. It's extension to Sean Smart, and that system change we talked about, getting him higher and more involved. Driven in, headed out, and we'll stay with the Tigers. Silla working with Smart. Getting tackled by Patty Burns, and Irish will maintain possession. Devin, you mentioned, we mentioned both exams already, which I thought was interesting, as Chad Riley said, well, back in 2013, those guys won, and they had their exams the next day. Notre Dame didn't give a day off. This year, if they win, Notre Dame will have a day off of school. They won't do the exams. They'll be proctored later, but it shows the educational commitment as Ento goes down that uh, you get to celebrate your national championship for uh, an hour or two. <laughs> Hudson's a little bit shorter. They're right out of here. I know. <laughs> Can't say draw, but win or lose, they, they're trying to make sure that they get these guys back on the path of academic success right away. Headed back to school and you can celebrate after exams, right? You can, and a lot of guys are graduating too. How smart of it, Mike Noonan, de dangling the carrot, saying, listen, that's great that you want to get another star. Go ace your exams, <laughs> and then we'll talk about what kind of celebration that will be. Part of Chad Riley's celebration, as we mentioned, will be a new hat. You saw there, it's weathered, a little superstitious, he says, but uh, get him a new, it's a new headgear to win. It'll have two stars on it, you gotta get a new one then. Take a look at the evolution, as we've mentioned already, what has happened the last three seasons with this core nucleus of guys being the same. Quite interesting to see. We saw it with West Virginia team, as well as Oregon State as well. Three out of the four programs that just didn't live up to the expectations that they thought would be coming off of 2021. West Virginia, Elite Eight, Oregon State, Elite Eight, all of those college cup. Our boy stepped up and got his foot on that when he had to because Ento was making the run behind. Zilla wanted a foul there, but Shapterov waved it off. But no call there because that was a turnover in a dangerous spot. Big boy game. Big boy game, okay. Oh, and off, uh, offside position, good combination, but flag is up. Is up on Trimnell for coming short. Think about it, what it takes for a Notre Dame player, mind you. And, and I think people at home are gonna go, well, that's easy because you've seen success. When you go that high and almost reach the summit of the mountaintop, to then be knocked off and come nowhere near it, yeah, that's a mind game. It starts playing with you as a player. So you, you come into the spring and they, they said that the spring wasn't bad, it just wasn't what they wanted it to be but that they knew that the pride aspect, they had to turn things around, but that they had the quality to be able to do it, you gotta find a way to dig in. And then, if you get the belief back, well, they also knew, listen, we, we can't just sit back and defend. They were very adamant about the fact that they know what they were in 2021, they were direct, they were defensive, and they were a set-piece team. That's not the case anymore. 16 different players with a goal, 20 different players with an assist. While you would think that it's going to be someone like a Matt Rue, or an Eno into on the front line, double digit goal scores. Friendly reminder that eight in the starting 11 tonight have a goal. So it, even if it all else fails up top in the striker position, they'll hit you out wide, they'll get you from set pieces, guys coming off the back line. That's the biggest amount of growth that we've seen of this Notre Dame team, not just in 2023, but the biggest difference from the squad that made it to the College Cup in 21. This one whipped in, doubt on his line, pulls it down. Just to finish on that Notre Dame too, what you also defined was leadership, because that 21 team did have huge personalities, Philip and great good players, Philip Quentin, Jack Lynn, Muhammad Omar, and others that led that team. And you had all these younger guys, you know, helping drive them forward. Smart pressure by Beth Four. Dama pings it over to Lundergaard. Lundergaard looking for an option, finding the wrong color jersey. Ethan O'Brien on it. Ramsey switch out to Russo.
Toronto. Trying to dink it over to Bafour. NCAA Women's Volleyball Semifinals on ESPN and the app Thursday night. Two great matchups, Texas and Wisconsin. Nebraska versus Pitt. Pitt-Louisville, another great battle they had, but Pitt took it forward and moving into the semifinals. Coverage begins 7 Eastern from Amelie Arena down in Warham, Tampa Bay. It's a brisk 37 degrees here right now. It's a chilly here in Louisville. Devin Kerr is covered in hand warmers and a lot of complaints when we were out there on the field. Boy Scouts motto, be prepared. There you go. Trimnell's down in some pain. He's going to be okay. and He's prepared to get up. You're prepared not for the cold, it seems. Yeah. Let's just say the Nebraska blood is falling apart. <laughs> it's, it's, it's not anymore. That's a little late. Bryce Brano left quite a bit on him. Should, it's a cardable offense there. The referee's been pretty good to everybody so far, letting yeah. him play a little bit. And Do you prefer that in the game yes. of this magnitude? Okay. Yes, let us play. The, the, the fine line that you walk with that, and you and I have talked about this in the past, is I would rather the game be more open and be able to let us play and get away with things just because I know I know what the standard's going to be, right? But do not let players then go police themselves on the ball. Friendly reminder that I'm still the one in charge holding the whistle, right? This is not a democracy. Set. <laughs> Are you Denzel from Remember the Titans? Exactly. This is not a democracy. It is a dictatorship. Bingo. Lead off to Jibbe. About 22 minutes in. What do you think of the, the play so far? Not even or no? I favor Clemson just in terms of possession. And their ability to, to move it forward a little bit quicker. And that's not to say that Notre Dame hasn't had some brief looks, but this is where Clemson have been better, just kind of in between the lines, finding those little half spaces off turns. Off down to Smart, he's working on Burns, gets in line, floats it back again. We've seen him do this a couple times, but Russo back defending. Good control by Popmar Boy. Out to Silla, the All-American on it again. Well read by Russo. Dev, you were just talking about how difficult it's been to deal with those Clemson players in the half spaces, specifically Scylla. I'm curious, Dev, how would you deal with that? Because right now it's really hurting the Notre Dame press. They're deciding whether they want to pull a winger in. They're deciding if they want the holding mid to step. And it feels like they just can't figure it out. This is communication. It comes down to the back line and the boys right in front of them. Ethan O'Brien, Bryce Bruno, Mitch Ferguson, and Josh Ramsey. Because if he starts to drop there, it's OK. Am I going to step off the back line and move into that space and track 1v1? That's good, but you also have to be cognizant of the fact that anyone else on this Clemson team will gladly step into that space. You've got to slide over and pinch. If one of the midfielders goes with him, it's kind of the same argument because the space that has been vacated defensively, you've got to track over. But that is also the bread and butter of this Notre Dame team defensively. They are so good at finding out that when they are open, to slide in and lock down those passing lanes. Third best team in the nation in terms of goals against average. The Irish are now second in the nation shutout percentage. They get a shutout 57% of their games. No, no. The willingness right now for Notre Dame just come a little bit higher. Have been sitting and allowing this Clemson squad to possess and line of confrontation just comes up a little bit. Nice flick on there by Meinhardt. Silla charging forward. He's got smart. Trimble went offside trying to get himself back on. Still. So he goes down. Smart recovers the ball, though. Silla had some options. Should he played that earlier to either Duquesne or Just Smart? Just let it down into the corner, and especially the confidence that Sean Smart has coming off of the only goal in the game winning goal against West Virginia. As if he didn't have enough coming into the meeting with us. <laughs> it's his sophomore. He is talented and he knows it, and I love it. And, and you sh he showed that in spades with that goal on Friday night. Good defending by Matt Rue. Brian scoops it up. Out to 
Josh Ramsey over to Patty Burns. Does play off of some of the confidence that we talk about for, or we're talking about, I should say, for a Notre Dame team that gets so close in 21 and then in 2022 it doesn't go your way. Gut check time getting back on track. Usman Silla, last year, the draft really shook him because high praise, a lot of coaches talking about him. Very good friends, almost brothers with the number one overall draft pick in Hamidi Diop. That was a tough pill to swallow for Usman Silla and his unselection if you will he wasn't picked and so to to get that motivation to come back to school to find a way to push through not turn pro somewhere else and graduate which he's going to do in may yeah, and, this and one, he's, he's an all-american gonna graduate this month and he's an all-american oh, headed down oh two two tigers there parish and Silla. can't really determine what they want to do with it smart will run it down he's got some help arriving Tremble. Oh, oh, takes a shot to the face and the flag will, will go up the call made by Matthew Rodman. What a battle this is between Patty Burns and Sean Smart down the corner trying to get cute. Patty Burns just trying to reach out actually thought that Sean Smart was going to move and was probably reaching for the shoulder to be fair. Comes a little bit high. And Shabdarab will just have a quick word with him. Nothing there was no intent or malice it seemed but just saying you got it you're getting you know, your hands high you got to keep them down. Kane brings that left peg over here to serve it in. Center backs forward. Hotmar boy two, Jaber 27 in the mix. Oh, an opportunity there. Looked like Trimble got a piece of it, then went off the Irish. And two first subs to come in. Nolan Spicer. Spicer comes in to replace Eno Ento. And Mohamed Say comes in, who's been a, a great story throughout his career. This young man has dealt with injuries for so many years, but he is a third team All League player in the ACC two seasons ago. He scored the ACC final a couple years back. He played in that 2021 championship game, a starter. Could really add something off the bench. We will see. That's their fifth corner. Brandon Parrish gives it a ride. Oh, he did it again. He did it to him in September from about the same spot. This one, though, carries much more weight. What a year Brandon Parrish is having. He was a part of that 2021 title winning team. And Mike Noonan said he wants the authenticity of this team to shine out, but the experience and understanding that he's not being stepped too quick enough. What a touch. What a touch after Brandon Paris brings this thing down. The explosion to come off that back foot and stepping right through it. Watch the rotation of the ball. Just a natural tendency as his right foot follows through. It's got the tiniest little hop up off the deck that proves the English to pull it away from Brian Dowd. It takes something special to beat Brian Dowd, an All-American, and the Mac Herman semifinalists. None so more than that wondrous strike from Brandon Parrish. What a hit by Parrish's eighth goal of the season. And as I mentioned, it was similar to where he had beaten Dowd and Notre Dame to equalize that game. Off the pipe it had to go in because that was so good. Kyra covers so much space. This one, a rocket from distance. It looked like Matt Rue might have got the slightest of touches on it, but did not do enough. And the Tigers up 1-0. Watch the back end of this for Brian Dowd. Just a slight hesitation to his right. Can't blame him as to whether or not he might pull it in that full frame of his. He got a mid on it. Comes down hard on that shoulder. Watch him. He has been kind of just back there moving it around a little bit. But again, he's a first team All American goalkeeper of the year in the conference. He is massive to this team. So seems he can gut it out. We'll see how he looks the next time he is challenged. How does that affect keepers like when you're coming out maybe to confront the ball coming in or there's those type of clashes? How does that affect them? You'll find out real quick. Yeah. Okay, the first ball, and if I'm a guy wearing an orange jersey tonight for the Clemson Tigers, find a way to test him somehow, whether it's a ball being whipped in for him to come off his line and go up and challenge, even a strike from distance, just to see how explosive and brave he's willing to be trying to make a save. 
easier said than done when <laughs> that's really yeah. the, the type of opportunity it took for Clemson to break the deadlock. Might have a chance here. Brought down shot saving at Dama. Second time he stood tall in the match. Uh, just up in between the lines, though, and we talked about this for Clemson. Great job by KK about four on the outside. And watch as this thing skips back up. Matt Rue is already on the half turn and then sees the space. Great job to stop right in front of the center back. Denenbacher's got some space. He'll give it a ride. Locked down. Bryce Bonneau able to play it back to Ramsey. Ramsey's pass pulls Russo wide, but he will get there. Did pop up on the screen earlier. Clemson is pretty sure when scoring first under Mike Noonan. 144, 11, and 2. This could be an opportunity. Cleared out by Trimble. Yeah, Dallin, just to keep on that point, Clemson is also 10 0 and 1 when leading at half. Yeah, this season they've been outstanding in that regard. And again, under Mike Noonan, it gets even more bananas. It's 103, 5, and 7 when scoring first under Noonan. Or charging forward, a lot of contact. Lundergaard saying he got the ball. Doesn't matter, the blue's will blue. He's interested though, KK about four. He's really yeah. come to life over the past couple of minutes. And oh, just watch on the inside as this could be a card here. Tried a quick restart and looked like Meinhard, Meinhard just got in the way, which usually is a yellow, but May have been some confusion if the ball was even going to be allowed to be played, though. Shabdarov seems like he wanted to blow it dead. Much better in the midfield, though, and whether it was the Matt Root chance or just prior, it's KK before one-on-one -on -one coming back to the inside. But more importantly, watch Bryce Bonneau and Ethan O'Brien. They've created some quality depth within the ranks in the midfield to play off of each other and provide support. Flipped in back post. Might be an opportunity. Hey, just wide. And the flag was down, and Russo, who's known for big goals, including the game winner when these teams met in September. Couldn't keep it on frame. Frustration for Daniel Russo on the back side of it. He knows it's the third one now. Twice hasn't been able to hit the target for an attacking player that has really come into his own as the season has gone on. He loves to run to the inside. This magical left foot of his, certainly from dead ball situations as he had that great goal against IU in the quarterfinal match. But the understanding when he does come in, allowing that run around him from Kyle Gannenbacher, who's become more comfortable going forward. This is what we're talking about. It's not just one player, maybe two up top for the Irish. Such was the case in 2021. Much more expansive and the willingness to take a chance on the attacking front. Russo, that was a great late run, wide open. But again, you mentioned the IU goal. I said the Clemson goal earlier, but Wake Forest, an equalizer. UNC, game winner. Like he, those are ACC games and an NCAA tournament game. He scores big goals and big matches, so keep your eyes on 11 white. He may pop up here again later in this one. Spaces by Notre Dame. Otto Bryan working well on Duquesne. Rolls it forward to Russo. 1v1 with Lundergaard. No foul going to be called there. Bob Marboy, no foul called there. Now he's coming for body. Bono on it. Back four. Driven out to Burns. Got that dangerous left foot. They'll plays it back to Bono. And he flicks it along the bat four. Bowl season starts on Saturday here in ABC. We got a triple header starting at noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific with Howard and Florida A&M in the Cricket Celebration Bowl. Then 3.30 Eastern, Miami of Ohio takes on Appalachian State in the Avocados from Mexico Cure Bowl. And we finish up with UCLA and Boise State at 7.30 Eastern in the Starco Brands LA Bowl at beautiful SoFi Stadium.
and get ready for the most wonderful time of the year song commercials that are coming about bowl season, not about Christmas. I thought we were talking about the warmer weather. <laughs> for you, you live that's in what Florida. I, that's what I heard in that read from you oh. just now. Yeah, that's what you heard. Uh, now Ethan O'Brien down too, and there was a sub at the break there. Sean Smart came out, this goal scorer in the first game. And as O'Brien is down, Remy Okanlolo replaced Sean Smart. Charlie Baker will also be joining me here at halftime. Can't wait to talk to the newly minted, well, relatively newly minted, within this first year of running the NCAA. Charlie Baker will join us. We'll talk a little about the 21st century model in soccer. Also, he had a pretty big proposal about Division I athletics last week put forward where you could now pay athletes directly through a trust fund in each school. We will talk about that, the response, and maybe the next steps for the NCAA as an organization. Former Massachusetts governor. Step there, Lundergaard, off the foul. How have you felt about Notre Dame's response? I, I like the response, and they're they're continuing to to change a little bit here after that turnover. It could be. Come on, Remy! Come on, Remy! Right now. You could hear Mike doing saying Remy's coming in the overlap. There he is, dirty orange. Doesn't play him. Back to Silla. Rob our boy, all freshman, all ACC freshman team, and third team all league. Harris digs it out. Silla closed down quickly. Bono does well. Underguard comes across, no call, bodies flying. Shot drop says, play on, here we go. Meinhardt. That's Okanola. Jibay. Floated out to Okanola. Jibay on the under overlap. This overload where the back line is not sure where the next run is going to come from, especially because Nolan Spicer drops down in his plane as a false nine. They've got at least five in the midfield as they start to go forward. Well, Spicer on that far right wing. Now it's Rue. He gets that pass out to Burns. Got a dangerous left footer. Okalola with the block. One, two at bat four. They do connect. He's charging in the box. He goes down. And Shatterup waves it off. The Notre Dame bench and their fans can't believe it. We'll take a look in a second. Patty Burns continues to hold his left leg and not really make the full journey up and down the flank here. We'll watch that. Grew on it. Again, squared the ball. Let's take a look at the, sh the penalty shout. And to me, this was a penalty. He's got the touch, and see, real time, it seemed that there was contact on the back shoulder by Kyle Jabert. That one, he seems to lean a little bit. It's just more of a hand. 
I, I have difficulty understanding as to whether or not there's an actual coming to on that right leg of KK before as he came back to the inside. But listen, credit to the Irish on that move because this is about maintaining Ooh. balance out there. Speaking of balance, Bryce Bonneau with a slaloming run. Wow. Eventually dispossessed, though, from the junior from Texas, former Gatorade National Player of the Year, Bono. Meinhard trying to go the other way. Safe first time. Oh, just wide. He opened up his body from our angle. It looked like it was destined for posting in. And just wide. You know, the way that this team builds is just when you give them the wide open space, they're willing to step into it. Notre Dame collapses defensively. Not their fault. Still wheeling on the other side, and as you get down here, you have to understand that the second and third runs are always going to be there. There's pressure there for Mitch Ferguson. Footsteps for the Spaniard, and they can't grab the double. Well, Say has played the last eight games. He's coming back from injury. He actually was injured in that Notre Dame game. And was almost able to mark his presence in it. Remember the semifinal, he came in the match, got the assist to Sean Smart. Near nearly a goal. What does Say bring it that, that can be different beyond obviously experience a fifth year grad student from, from Spain? We love the hold up play that you were able to get off of Sean Smart for short. Nice one. Hold on, bro. Russo on it now. Tries to spin. And no call there for Parrish. Burns looking to clip it into Spicer. Thought he was going to cross it first time and try to play a square ball. He brings it down. Irish now on the front foot. You hope in a final the two teams bring their best play. Both teams are playing at a very high level right now. It's led to some chances. A lot of opportunities. Meinhardt tries to skip forward. Chased down by Ramsey. Call oh, foul on. Oh, and then a pull down afterwards on the bench here. Making friends. Yeah. Huh. Josh Ramsey once again. What defending, by the way. Notice the angle. He's not going to win the foot race in general. Out of respect yeah. to Alex Meinhardt, Josh Ramsey can he can drop gears and then pick up real quick. And I got to tell you, if I'm going to be willing to step out and maybe make a little bit of noise, I'm not necessarily sure I'm wearing a Clemson jersey. I want to do it in front of the Notre Dame bench. <laughs> Is that what you'd have been thinking about as a player? Let's go to the opposite yeah, side of the field. Boys, come chase me here. I was a fistful of jersey. Good call by the near side AR. Matthew Rodman. Both teams scrapping here. Five minutes to go in the first half. that we saw so frequently at least the quarter hour a little bit further within this match it's on Silla Meinhardt even when you're active though that goes back to your question about Ron and saying what he's capable of his IQ maybe through ball Rue trying to get there before Adama he doesn't and it goes off Rue for the goal kick Clemson making a sub Nate Richmond coming on. Nate Richmond, he's had a tough season because of injuries. He's third team all ACC, but late October to, didn't play all the way through the tournament until the last two games. But an interesting story family wise. We've said this before. His dad was in the 87 team that won the national championship. Richie, who scored in the 87 final in a 2 0 win against San Diego State. So maybe Apple doesn't fall, fall far from the tree. We'll find out if Nathan can get on the score sheet. He's done it. Throughout the course of this year, scoring five goals on the campaign. Notice how quickly Notre Dame was willing to distribute, though, as Clemson came high and Alex Meinhardt came back over. The back line got up and got a little complacent, to be honest. Love the idea to go root one up over the top and test the pace of the back line and see as to whether or not the goalkeeper and Adema is willing to come off his line. So Rue goes down hard. Pop our boy. This may be the first card of defense it is, so their freshman center back is going to be on a yellow for the final 48 minutes at least. A young man that you're going to want to watch for years to come. He's high, he's aggressive in this situation. 
physical, but lean right into the backside of that. You just hope he's all right. It's like a ringer. Yeah. Rue, first team all conference player, is up. You don't normally see Pop Mall Boy coming late to the party like that. Head it down, Rue on it. Richmond crowds him out. Can't maintain possession. Burns winds up and floats toward the spot. So might be able to bring it down, does, lays it off. Say he's able to win the header and skip it forward, but Ramsey, as always, just reads it well, ushers it out. Covers of the NCAA championships continues with Women's Volleyball Championship semifinals Thursday, December 14th at 7 p.m. Eastern on the ESPN. For more information on the NCAA Women's Volleyball Championship, log on to NCAA.com, the official home for all 90 NCAA championships. As you mentioned earlier, Texas, Wisconsin, and the early game is Nebraska against Pitt starting at 7 o'clock. Clemson right now to change defensively. We've alluded to some of the shift from Notre Dame. If Patty Burns can continue to push up with the inversion of what was KK about four previously, but now Wyatt Lewis, it's going to bode well. They box the midfield, and if you're Brandon Paris and Jemay, you have to find a way to create balance defensively. That means you got to have a talk with the guys in the back line to come up and help, or the front line in your front three to provide more pressure. That also removes some of those spearheads for Clemson attacking. A little sloppy at the back there. Pop our boy couldn't keep it out, but the ball hit the corner flag to stay in play. And Notre Dame continues to apply pressure. Minute 20 to go in the half, and Burns is corn cross. Finds Russo. Oh, nice little point turn by Russo. And he will get a corner. Remember when they played that game at Alumni Stadium? Clemson scored two goals in the final second and one minute, one, one in the last two minutes of the first half. She looks on the other foot here as Notre Dame seems that like they are applying tons of pressure with 60 seconds to go. Clemson would be happy to get to the break up 1 0. Wyatt Lewis, he's wide open on the back post if he can get him. Move on! What to say? Move on! That's not where they want to go. Move on! And when it's not going well for you, and well, certainly Notre Dame playing much better right now, you're looking for a separating factor. 37% of their goals coming from dead ball situations. Controls it. Jabay back to Jabert. Frenchman Trent both transfer Morgan State this offseason. Jabay goes down hard and the call is in there late. That's why Jabay and Jabert came here to win a national championship. Jabay was the player of the year in the Pac 12 last year. Jabert was an all league player and they'll happily let it count down. Your thoughts on the first 45? Tigers up 1 0. Big boys came to play. Yeah, you saw a lot of really good movement from Clemson. Early on, they were certainly the ones that had the brunt of possession. Wouldn't say they created a ton, but that doesn't really matter when you get the type of strike that you got out of Brandon Parrish coming off the second ball at the top of the box. And Notre Dame, they grew. They definitely got better through this game. The momentum shifting towards them, though the record with the Clemson Tigers and Mike Newton, pretty difficult to take down after 45 minutes. Well, let's see how they're going to do it. Let's get down to Marion, who has Coach Chad Riley. Coach, it was an all Notre Dame last 15 minutes. What do you think about your team's response to the goal? I thought it was really good. I thought we started well, and then we kind of lost our way for a little bit. Um, lost some tackles, lost some some momentum, and then they got the deflected off the corner, which which I do think woke us up to another level, and I think we're all over in the last 15, and we need to continue that. What has to happen for you to equalize in the second half? Yeah, I think we have to continue to do what we were doing the last kind of 15, 20 minutes of the, of the game, and you got to put one in. Thank you, Coach Gluck. Thank you. Back here at Lynn Family Stadium for the College Cup final between Clemson and Notre Dame. A fun first 45 minutes. That man, Brandon Parrish, made the difference. A beautiful goal in the 27th minute. Give the Tigers the 1-0 advantage. Can they hoist their fourth College Cup? They got 45 minutes. Marion has Mike Noonan on the sideline. We're just down here joking about my jacket. I will say, Coach, it's quite <laughs> warm. You look pretty warm yourself. So second half, first half got away from you a little bit towards the end. What player do you need to take control of this game? Well, uh, Jerron Gabara sets the tone for us, right? And uh, and when he was on the ball and we were playing in the first half, we were really, really good. He scored the goal, and it, it's it's soccer. It's human nature, right? Uh, we play like we were 1-0 up, and they play like they were 1-0 down. What do you need? What is the key to closing out this game? Scoring the next goal. 
Thank you, Coach. Good luck. All right. Thanks. It's Alan. He's a simple. He's he's What's a smart, simple man. The jacket. It might be chinchilla. It may be alpaca. I'm not sure. It's, it's warm. something. It's warm. It's warm. It's warm. It's, warm. it's warm. it's something lovely. Yeah. But you take a look at second half goals allowed on the, on the season. Clemson's allowed 10. Notre Dame just six. They've outscored opponents 26 to six. But they need a goal themselves right now to get back in this thing. They and most of their matches this year have played from in front. Devin, what is the key here in the first five, ten minutes to try to set? tempo yeah, yeah. it's tempo is everything right you know we talk about belief coming into the match and maintaining confidence to allow you to go express yourself saw a little bit of that from both of these teams but on either sides of the first half mm -hmm. right you know it's a it's a statement that rings true whether you're nine years old 19 years old or in the pros in 29 come out and set the tempo early the next five ten minutes of this game go establish your dominance regardless of the scoreboard and then take advantage moving forward Notre Dame one two and one when trailing at half this year as I mentioned the vast majority of their matches, they scored first. That is not the case here. Can Matt Rue and the Irish battle back? They wanted this Tigers team. They wanted to avenge the 2021 semifinal loss. This Tigers crew from this year, one of the Notre Dame team that beat them back in September. Mohamed Say, number nine in orange, does get the start in the second half. As we mentioned, he's been dealing with injuries. The most minutes he's given in the last eight games is 30 minutes. You find that interesting? They started the second half with Say. Physical side, his IQ too, very high. We never got to that point at the tail end of the first half because of how aggressive Notre Dame was. But his understanding of when to step off the back line, when to help stretch, how to push players, none better in this Clemson squad than Mohamed Say with healthy. And similarly to what Chad Riley did at the semifinal, Mitch Ferguson, the center back, carrying a little bit of an injury, so is his backup, Mo Williams, carrying a bit of an injury. Williams starts the second half on the ball now, 14 white. What do you make of that move? Is that is that just about health? Well, we talked about this in the, the semifinal. It's going to be the same answer now. It's, it's twofold. One is health because they're both carrying a knock. So minute usage, the workload, being able to create balance within the two. I do like Maurice Williams a little bit more in terms of his athleticism. Mm -hmm. He's got a bit more speed. He has the understanding to chase a little bit better. There's not a massive separation between him and Mitch Ferguson. But when you have guys like Mohamed Say and Usman Silla who are so clever trying to come on the diagonal and break down your defensive unit, why not run with Maurice Williams? Parrish pops it out to Pop Marboy. Over to Matt M. Lundergaard. Over to Arthur Duquesne. Clemson could win. They've become the seventh school to win four or more college cups. Heading into rarefied air, Mike Noonan would have two national championships. Only two other coaches in the entirety of Clemson history have two national championships. One being Dabo Sweeney, of course, the other being Coach Ibrahim, the former Clemson soccer coach. Picks it off. Say able to settle it. He's six for four, but he's got good feet. Oh, Duquesne couldn't handle it, but Minard scoops it up. Get off Duquesne's foot. A little wayward. Back to Williams, the transfer from Seton Hall and Cincinnati. This is his second year in Notre Dame, though. Laid off by Spicer. Connecting with Russo. Back to Spicer in a foot race. It looks like he's going to win. This Chabert with shoulder to shoulder. Nope. That's a foul they would call. Rue goes down. The center back at Mr. Kerr. It's the arm. Yeah. He can if he wins the, the foot race here, but. Watch the arm extended away right there. Great job, by the way. Not just the move by Ruta come and just get a little half step in front of him. I actually think Javier would have, or excuse me, yeah. that Javier would have gotten there, but he turns his Whoa. body, establishes position. That was live. 
You don't see that every day. And it almost just hit Andema. No one on that back line, nor in the broadcast booth or on the field for Notre Dame is ready for that. Shabdarov looked like he was going to spray the magic spray and let them set up a free kick, and Russo just took it. Driven, deflected. And you Let's take a look at the restart real quick. This Notre Dame playing a pace here. And then Damon just happens to look at the right time. <laughs> If Russo got a little more over, it might have gone over his head, but it almost hit him. It's a Hall of Fame move if it goes in. Oh, my, my word, yeah. Fourth corner of the match for the Irish here. A couple late nights on the on the FIFA game. Yeah. Burns checks his run to the near post, continues it. A lot of bodies there. The Pop Mar boy won that one. Looking for Silla. The race with Ramsey. Picks it up in space. Talented young sophomore. Had the assist in the semifinal game. And then Russo kind of crossed up there, making a run or not. Harris picks it up, and oh, Ethan O'Brien is down in a heap. And we'll have Trainer coming out immediately. It seems like he caught a like a glancing blow. We'll take another look. Jave was just trying to play quick right up over the top and oh, I'll leave a mark. Nothing glancing about that one. I thought he talked a hit. He took the ball. As hard as he went down, he did pop back up right away, which is good to see, but hasn't really fully recovered. I'd say much of the same for Notre Dame on the attacking front and. It all starts up top because, you know, we can talk tactics and, you know, whether it's Wyatt Lewis or KK, they're, they're understanding that they need more bodies centrally, right? So they give themselves the ability to play off of each other. But defensively, when they've turned it over and they've had to defend, it's incredible work to Mike Noonan's point coming out of halftime of Jerome Chabay and eliminating that threat playing through the six. He's the outlet for everything. You get into him, it's like a heartbeat. It comes in, it comes out. You play in, you have the ability to play more on the outside. Right now, Notre Dame doing a good job keeping the game in front of and on the exterior. So O'Brien walks off with what looks to be a bloody nose. The NCAA Men's College Cup is brought to you by Inspire. Sleep apnea innovation. No mask, no hose, just sleep. Okay, Bath 4 will come in for O'Brien while well, he's tended to. And it is 36 degrees here, it's cold, so. A ball to the body hurts a little more. It stings a little more than any time, but you take it to the face. It's not good. Chad Riley did tell Marion down the sideline. This is temporary. When he's patched up, he'll be back in the match. Thank you, Marion. You mentioned at halftime that Clemson can't sit. It's not what they're known for. Yeah. But in a game like this, this is it. This is everything to play for. You're up 1-0. Is it, do you have a tendency to be more conservative down the stretch? Well, the hope if you're Mike Noonan is no. Not if you're Noonan, the players. Noonan, like when you're yeah. out there playing, is it hard to? I was never very much of the mindset of playing scared. Yeah. Hey, think about it. Oh, oh man. Oh, Williams almost turned over a terrible area. The, right. reason, the reason you've had success all season is because of a certain playing style. Mm -hmm. Now, if we're talking about the last couple of minutes and maybe we're adding an extra defender and, okay, we want to dig in a little yeah. bit, that's a different conversation. But with a runway as long as this, and an opponent like Notre Dame, you can't play fearful. Mm -hmm. Do not continue to sit back. Do not continue to drop deeper. They need to stay on the ball because as much as you change defensively, that's going to wear you down both physically yeah. and mentally. It, it starts to eliminate some of that cocky decision making in the best of ways for Clemson going forward because that is where they are at their best is on the attacking side. Parrish able to score a lot of trouble there. Say combining one, two with Silla. Two of the starters in that 2021 championship game. Silla's pass off though. 
Clemson's been great defensively in this tournament. All year, they had six total shutouts. This year, they have four just in the postseason play alone. They're in one right now, outscoring opponents 8 0. Could become the sixth school all time to go the entirety of the NCAA tournament, reaching the College Cup, hoisting the trophy without allowing a goal. Brian's kind of holding his back as he came in contact with Say. He's back on the pitch. Oh. A lot of guys mixing it up now. This is O'Brien seems to be the center of all action right now. Grad student from Washington, part of the Sounders Academy grew up in, O'Brien. on the field starting in the 2021 game. Missed all of last year due to an injury. He was a key guy redshirting that year. But back in the fray, and here's Meinhardt. That's the cut back to that right foot. Two-time American Conference Player of the Year, Offensive Player of the Year, while at Tulsa transferred in this year. Good thought, not enough on it to get to Silla. Well read by O'Brien. NCAA Women's Volleyball Semifinals are on ESPN in the app Thursday night. Number two seed Texas taking on, on Wisconsin at 9.30. Party gets started with the number one overall seed Nebraska taking on Pitt, who was in the Final Four last year. Coverage begins at 7 Eastern from Amelie Arena in Tampa. Souvenir. Oh, the usher yeah. got to it. Yeah, Sorry, came buddy. Down. The usher's Sorry, all buddy. In. Sorry. Tough young, break. Young man in the front row thought Santa came early. Nice white, but kind of green ball down there he would have picked up. <laughs> yeah, credit with, with the weather and all the elements that have been here in Louisville to the groundskeeping staff and how well they've been able to get this pitch play. Say, able time to bring it down. Take it for a walk for a second, see if he can earn a corner. Doubled up and turned over. Tried to make Gennenbacher, doesn't work. O'Brien trying to release out of the pressure and does. Long ball looking for Rue. Oh, oh steps right in front. Scooped up, Rue on the turn now. Charging forward. Russo, touch was heavy. Alex Rosa, Alex Rosa! No foul, no foul! again. Burns! Burns off the post! Oh, the senior can't believe it. Silla's down. He's back up. No foul call. Now Burns floats it in. And Dana there. Woo! Very efficient. One, two touch in and out. Just look at the depth that they create within. That's some kind of ball for Nolan Spicer and then how, oh, how is he able to get that to Matt Root as they recycle? So Patty Burns expected this to come sooner. Notice how he's having to chase to his left to step into it. That's why his form comes off a little bit. He's leaning back. Body comes up off the post. Spicer charging forward again. It looked awkward to say the least in getting that strike off. But I was with him though. I expected it to come that half second sooner. Whoa. If it does, he can step through it. Jabe just pulls on Bono. A little bit of a professional foul. Bono's asking the same thing I'm asking. Is that not going to be a yellow? And Dimitar Shavdarov is contemplating it, but no. Nope, he is actually. He's looking in the book. Maybe delayed, but I 
think Jabe is going to be getting one. Still can't do that. You can't? My fab's made a lot of progressions in the, the refereeing world. One of them is not allowing yourself to drag another player down. Believe it or not, it's, it's hard to believe. It's not football. <laughs> so Jabe goes in the book. Shabdarov finally walks over and it gives him a card. See if O'Brien can put this in a dangerous area. They do like this long ball to the back post. Second ball back across. 16 of their 43 goals this year scored off set pieces. It's over on 37%. Brian drives it in toward the spot. Parrish was there first. Bryce Bonneau, throw in. How about this for family lineage? It's the seventh member of his family to attend Notre Dame. I don't know if he had a, a, a say or what, but it didn't. I don't know. This is where he came to go to school, was proud of it, missed his first year due to injury, but been effective this year to say the least. All league player. Got out by Popmar Boy, but that'll give a corner. Fifth of the match for the Irish. Winger, it's down, it's off the line! But it's still live! Sean Smart trying to spark a transition the other way, and he may. Sage, ooh, tried to release Silla, but it hit Smart. Holy cow. Bodies flying everywhere. You're applauding, why? Uh, it's a great job by both teams recovery-wise, but that's Bryce Renault coming back in to eliminate this ball to the far side, Alex Meinhardt. Had a boatload of real estate if they could get a ball through. Ryan on it now. Parrish, the goal scorer, defending him. And easy call. Let's go take a look what happened on the line, because that looked like it was destined for a goal, but cleared off. Watching Dema, the goalkeeper from Clemson, he hesitates as it comes back through. Feels like he's got a path, and watch, stops. Oh. He just absolutely gets caught in blinders doesn't come back up through and stops coming. You come as a goalkeeper, you got to come and win that ball. Love the movement on the backside, though. Putmar boy. Does Brandon Parrish get another goal for that? Heads up, ball's coming in. We'll come back to it in a second. And now we have another transition. Duquesne couldn't really handle it. Almost kind of worked out for him, but I know tracked it down. And a foul will be called. Brandon Parrish clearing that off the line, scored the goal. This, we are on a knife's edge right now. Had the hockey assist in the game against West Virginia as well. Yeah. Cool. And what does Mike Noonan say? As good as they are attacking wise and the patterns of play that he's seen, defense wins championships. Four yeah. straight clean sheets for this Syracuse team right now. Sarah. Excuse me, Syracuse. Got you it, last year with the, the Orange, orange in a championship game. Apologies. Yeah. Ian McIntyre's happy somewhere. He's excited. He's like, yeah, yeah. I wasn't. Yeah. Well, sorry to the Clemson faithful. All good. They don't care right now. If this scoreline holds, you can call them whatever. They're oh, national yeah. teams. <laughs> Forever. Sport of immortality. All right, with a goal kick here, let's take a look at the Capital One yeah. Cup standings as teams can beat, compete for a combined 500 thousand dollars in student athlete scholarships from capital one to the men's side right now cal on top florida state women they're on top big uh, addition to that last week with the Knowles taking home the women's college cup so kk baffour checks back in the match this time for daniel rousseau that kid's in a cutoff i mean a tank top are you he is he may have done a walking tour today. He I may was, have gone to do I he was may have with some of, the, some of the Clemson faithful, the front office staff in the elevator, heading down to the field for rehearsal, and I just looked at him and said, it's cold. I was, uh, let's say I was politely told that this isn't cold weather. One of, our, one of them from California, Northern California, very comfortable. And to your point, one of the videographers looked at me and said, I'm going to go put a tank top on. <laughs> well, there you go. Felt a little bit worse about myself after that. Impressive to say the least. Good turnout here and bands on both sides. Notre Dame about a five and a half, six hour drive from here. 
Priscilla able to get it out nicely with Burst to Smart. Undergard. Pass turned over to Bono. Brian takes another hacking from Parrish. being told by Shabgrab to back up. And he was able to get on the ball. Should he have been forced back? Was he given the full 10 yards? Not so sure that was. Well, here comes Jabay the other way. He Give passes it. the ball. They've got options. Duquesne is on the back post wide open. The ball gets to Silla, though. He's dangerous on that right peg. Deflected. Smart pass, just a little careless with it. No panic, though, from Ethan O'Brien. Love the recovery for him because the scout in Usman Silla, as good as he is in so many different areas on the field, what you have to know about him is he loves the right foot and the ability to cut back in, use your momentum against you, and then challenge the goalkeeper. Well done by the midfielder from Notre Dame. That's Clemson's first shot attempt in the 38th minute, so about 30 minutes. Since then, back to Andana. Distribution is kind of... Off in the middle of the field. Parrish has to try to track it down. Bay. Got it to Meinhard, back to Smart. Time to retain some possession right now if you're Clemson. Just make Notre Dame work a little bit more. Mm -hmm. We've had much too much of the possession. The Irish have. I know Ento was forced to turn over a bad spot there. They are working though. I mean, credit, there is Brandon Parrish on the back line. We've seen Duquesne involved. Sean Smart, pop my boy. Very active. Dinked over and Bono, heavy touch! Why? Wow. Thought it was in. So did I. Thought it was in. I mean, what a little press right there then through them. Watch him just spin off the back shoulder. Great move coming out of the midfield by Bryce Reno. If you're... Kyle Jaber, it's difficult to track because your natural tendency as a center back, you start to turn towards the run of play. You see the runner in front of you. He doesn't get the back shoulder call. Bruno slips right through. It is a difficult angle, but he is a marksman, certainly at least this year with four goals on the season, seven assists to his name. Thought he had that one. And from our angle, Dev, up on the, on the near side of your camera here, when he hits it, I'm waiting for the net to ripple. I, I thought I, there's just a way I thought I thought it was gonna go in and then it hits back behind the goal. Needless to say, the bench was pretty shocked. As were the Irish fans, that this is still a one-nil game. Dallin, you're not the only one. Devin, you're not the only one that uh, thought that this was a goal. The the bench players, every single one of them standing up right now for Notre Dame, some of them crossing the line while that ball was in flight. And you just get a sense down here on the sideline that it feels like they're knocking on the door, like a goal is on the tip of their tongue. It really does feel that way. They, they have put a bunch of chances together here. Obviously, one cleared off the line by Brandon Parrish. You compare that with Clemson right now, just getting their first shot of the half. And since the 38th minutes, as we just mentioned, a very different game right now. And Mike Dunan told us about Jerron Jabe. When he's on the ball, he's their main guy. That's, that's when they're at their best. How do they get him more on the ball and get him more involved in this game to control it? Just got to keep moving him, and you're not going to make a massive adjustment tactically for your six and Jabe on the inside because as much as we talk about getting him involved, he is that stalwart defensively that helps you keep the glue intact in front of the back line so you can't venture him out either side of the pocket. You can do that with Brandon Parrish. He's much more comfortable there, but just the ball at his feet, trying to find a way to play through him. As, as the front line comes back deeper to help defensively, They've gotten a little bit shaky in that area, I might add. That gives them more numbers. So you can play over and then down through. It's just patterns. It's finding a way to find the initial outlet and then releasing him as opposed to going through him initially. O'Brien over it. Whipped in. I got it, got it. Williams off to crack at it. Still hanging around, but no! A little scissor kick. Deflects out for another corner. Their sixth corner of the match is Bono will, will change out for Daniel Russo. 
And we've mentioned Russo a couple times this game, but again, big goal guy. Got the game winner, the first goal in the IU game in the quarterfinals. He got the game winner when they played Clemson earlier in the year. He got the equalizer late on the road at Wake Forest. He scores big goals in big games. Back post, Williams, a lot of contact. Goal kick. Catch your breath, I'll tell you about the ESPN Bowl quadruple header starting 11 a.m. Eastern on Saturday with Georgia Southern and Ohio in the Myrtle Beach Bowl. Then 2.15, Jacksonville State takes on Louisiana in the RNL Carriers, Carriers NOLA Bowl, followed by the Isleta New Mexico Bowl with New Mexico State and Fresno State at 5.45 Eastern. And we cap the day at 9.15 Eastern with Cal and Texas Tech in the Radiance Technologies Independence Bowl. Remy Okunlola checks in for Sean Smart. Number 30 in orange. The freshman, first time he's played in a game of this magnitude. You see Smart, the goal scorer from the semifinal jog off. Love it. 25 minutes ago in a national championship game, up one nothing. Many a coach, player off, player on. Here's your job. Noonan's still coaching. Yeah. Got to respect it. Doing one of the best in the business. He's got to get his guys to get back on the front foot. You see the amount of shots their names put up. And now Muhammad Say is getting a yellow card. For staying in front of the ball there on the restart. Standing over the ball on the restart. So we've got three different Tigers with the card. Nobody for the Irish. It's a big focus of referees coming into 2023, though. At, at every level, eliminating your your initial threat, which a player stoppage, getting up in front of it, not allowing a team to get back into the run of play. We saw it earlier, let him play this time around. Mm -hmm. No bueno. And Tyler Trimble comes right on for him. Say so had an extra word there for Dimitar Shabdarov. He probably doesn't, he's a veteran guy, fifth year player, doesn't want to push it though. So he will come off and he's, you know, says, what did I do to Mike Duna? But Mike said, you got to, we're going to sit you down for a second here, son. Let's regroup. Wyatt Lewis, nice ball. Back to Lewis, the sophomore. Takes back to Russo. That four on, he's got Ento in the middle. <laughs> he is just, I'll tell you what, two and orange for the Clemson Tigers, Pop Mar boy. This is, he's a special young man. Clinic and defending right there, just one on one. He waited for the support, doesn't get it because Arthur Duquesne comes down, and then all of a sudden he's got the perfect positioning, just shielding this to the sideline. Another great Clemson center back from Montverde Academy. Got that great pipeline. Sean Smart came off from Montverde. That's where he's about Silla. Silla and Boyer, both, lead, both uh, countrymen too from Senegal. Both all league players. Bay, tries to flick it on. He's looking long, the underguard will head it. Spicer picks up the second ball. Rides the challenge well. Shopper up waves it off. Pinged up to Silla. Good ball, good outlet. And it somehow sneaks through to Trimnell. He's got Minard on his right, but he goes back to Silla. Silla, you know he wants to get on that right foot. Back to Okunlola. He can give it a rip and deflects into the hands of Dow. Seen Okunlola have a couple great goals this year, including the game against Louisville early this year. Guys, that transitional moment was a perfect example of what I've been seeing the last couple build-up sequences from Notre Dame. They're just a half step too late for that ball, playing that ball in the attacking third that's going to break down the line. Yes, they've had good choices, but the way that the runs are developing and the midfielders that are behind the ball, they're just playing it a half step too late. It's sort of been the identity, unfortunately, this team the whole first half and now into the second. It's a little bit slow. The good news is, is that point that the options are there. 
So Shabdarov pulled it back because he wanted to let him get the subs in. One of the subs, again, is Mitch Ferguson coming back at the starting center back in for Mo Williams. And you see Bryce Bonneau come back in for Ethan O'Brien, who makes way. And there's Ferguson, again, missing games due to injury. Got himself back healthy. was just thrown into a NCAA tournament game. Came back in the Indiana game in the quarterfinals. After not playing since played well. five weeks, very, played very well. well. It, yeah. it would have been a nice performance in general, yet alone against an Indiana team that yeah. seemed destined one destined once again to make another College Cup. Loaded to the spot, headed out. This might break the path of Trimble. Quickly, can he flick it onto Silla? He does. Now to the Meinhardt to the right. He plays him early. He continues his run. Trimble on the back post once it. He's not going to get it. Meinhardt walks forward. Square ball. Oh! They're superstar. They're Tally's man. They're senior. He's got one college cup. That goal may give him a second. This is the performance Mike Noonan was looking for from his attacking unit and Usman Silla. Play it now. He's been slow in every single step throughout the course of the game, but starting to find some confidence. It's open. It's smartly put to the outside. But notice how long Alex Meinhardt waits for this to develop. Credit to Notre Dame. Six separate players drifting back. They forget about the most important one. Everybody recovers defensively, but they get too flat. They don't have the ability for the trailing run to block it Look at that half step by Usman Silla and the beautiful step right through the ball. Draws the Notre Dame back defensively even further. Allows himself to get on his right foot. More so, the positioning to actually step through it, take some of the pace off the ball, and double the lead. Wow, I mean, it just seemed like Notre Dame was knocking on the door, but there were a number of transitional moments, or maybe one here. Baffour trying to answer right away. Spicer couldn't control. And a little confusion at the back. Clemson was having some counterattack moments that just kept breaking down. That time they got it right and they got it perfect. As Silla gets the goal, first team All American, the Matt Kerman Trophy semifinalist, getting his 13th goal of the season, 25th of his career. He had the equalizing goal in the ACC tournament final against North Carolina, which they went on to win in penalties. And now might have the one that ices. The College Cup. Also putting together a few passes. Trimnell feels for a handball, none given. Trimnell isolated against Ferguson. He'll step. Good job defensively. That's a ball from Alex Meinhardt, by the way. Yeah. I mean, that is a young man, 15 and orange from Clemson. This is a guy coming over. Two years back to back, Mac Herman semifinalist, Tulsa transfer, rookie of the year, offensive player of the year, coming out of the American, best 11, top drawer. 29 goals and 39 appearances for Tulsa. To go from a goal scorer who is the guy, the focal point of an offense, you bring him away from the center locations, you play off of him a little bit more. It was a slow start this season, but what patience it was to find Silla on the doorstep. Floated in by Parrish. Headed down. My hearty field goal good. A couple more subs coming on, but quickly, Sean Smart checked in for Arthur Duquesne, so it looks like he's going to play on that left side, give Duquesne a little bit of a break. The freshman was working hard up and down that flank. If you're new to college soccer, you can check out in the second half. You can re enter the match one. So Brian's come and gone, but one of those was because of an injury, so he made his re-entry already. Drop Uzi, drop! Drew battling against Popmar Boy. Goes out for a corner. Good job on Matt Rue, though. Just keep working here right now if you're the Irish. Just inside 20 minutes to go. Head up, positive thoughts. Guys like Josh Ramsey, Brian down on the back line. Keep everybody motivated right now. You are not out of this game. Not by a long shot. They get a next goal, but make this whole thing different. And Damon comes off the line. Doesn't look clean. Suspect twice. 
The one that almost was for Notre Dame. Spent the start of the second half. Hesitated in this one. It's the sophomore from Montverde via Ghana. Popped up in the air. Kenneth Bacher was the one that won that, won that header. He's heading toward the corner, but headed out. And now Ramsey will track it down. Bono turns on the Jets on the inside, pops it back up to Burns. A lot of bodies in the box. The center backs are still forward. Great entry, but then I think it deflects. No, just off of Rue. Couldn't quite get his body position right. Let's take a look at the two goals that have given the Tigers a 2-0 advantage in the final. And a beautiful touch by Brandon Parrish, just allowing this ball to develop in front of him. Well taken. 25 yards out. Thanks for coming. And then as good as the finish is by Usman Silla, well-deserved. His 12th goal in his last 13 games. The assist by Alex Meinhardt to allow the support to come up, allow the defensive line to overstep, find Silla, and find their second of the night. Notre Dame now has given up two goals in only three matches all season. It's now their 22nd match. The irony of that is two of those three are to these Tigers. Devin, I'm watching the Notre Dame coaching staff try to figure out what adjustments they're going to make. Should they go three in the back? Should they go five in the back? What would you do here tactically? Well, we'll answer that in one second. Zocamola striding forward right now. Does it pop forward, Devin, your thoughts? I'm staying right now. Okay. I mean, because to be fair to the Notre Dame squad, they've had some very good passages. You know, some of just the level of quality once they've stepped over midfield, slow decision making, a half step just slow making the overall decision come to its idea. They're not lacking those ideas though, it's a good thing. And they do have possession. And to be fair, the way that the game has gone after the goal, they're almost playing with three in general anyway. Now they're not releasing as much with Patty Burns on that far side, but as they've allowed him to progress up the field, we've seen it with Wyatt Lewis, KK before, coming to the inside, it's more pressure on Josh Ramsey, but as he's proven the entirety of the year, and certainly in the semifinal against Oregon State, he's more than happy to take that workload. She cross under 14 minutes and 30 seconds to go from Louisville, Kentucky. The College Cup Final alongside Devin Kerr. I'm Dallin Cuff here at Land Family Stadium. Marion Crowder, the former All-SEC attacker from Georgia, is down on the field. Cuts the Tigers up 2-0. Goal in each half. Brandon Parrish started at the 27th minute. Usman Silla adds another in the 70th. And that is where we are. The Tigers on the precipice of their fourth College Cup and their second in just three seasons. It would be just the third team to do that. Stanford and since 2000, I should say. Stanford did that 03-04. Excuse me, Indiana did that 0304. Stanford did that 15 to 17 when they had three straight. Jordan Moore is part of the two part of them. One of those, the one against Clemson in 2015. Good what turn, turn. smart. Holy cow. Good of an opportunity. You know he can hit it. Did the semifinal. Dragged it wide. Quick break in the action. Tell you about the coverage of the NCAA championships continues with the women's volleyball championship semifinals Thursday, December 14th. 7 p.m. Eastern on ESPN. For more information on the NCAA Women's Volleyball Championship, log on to NCAA.com. The official home for all 90 championships. There's Graham Neff, the Clemson AD. He's enjoying it right now. He's fully clothed, unlike some of the other fans we have seen that have now geared down. Shirtless out here in 37 degrees. Like it. Boy, gets to the feet of Jabe, back to Andema. Smart had his arms up, once the distribution, Andema just a bit off with it. Pushing header back to Smart. Still had a lot of space, plays Meinhard. They will find, try to find Oak and Lola. Jabe want, probably want that ball back, a lot of air under it. Turn for Parrish. 
couldn't work his way out. What a spell of possession, though. And that's what we're talking about. This Clemson team at its highest level, they can really ping it around. And the conversation with Mike Noonan at the beginning of the year, very different meeting in October 15th. They were away at Syracuse, and it's a 1-1 draw, but talked about high ceiling that they had. Ento drives it in, back four, making the run! Almost went up an own goal, but Antema. <laughs> Look at him hold that ball like a baby. No hesitation whatsoever here from Endema. And watch his reaction as this thing comes all the way back to his left side because he's shifting. He's expecting this ball to be picked up right around the penalty mark. Great positioning. Just plants his right foot full extension. It's excellent goalkeeping. He's got he's on four straight shutouts, as we've said. He is an individual only had three complete game shutouts during the regular season. He always had, already has four now in the NCAA tournament. Nice space again. Shorts that pass a little bit. Let's see over to cover. KK about four now on the ball. The right back. Picked over to Rue. He might get a step here. Rue 1v4. Oh, nice back heel. Clever, but didn't matter. Ento was offside. Trap drop well. Keep playing because Clemson's a chance at an advantage now. Harris has to run for it, but makes it. Ferguson gets there. Couldn't hold the ball in though, Russo. Wyatt Lewis now going to come on for Ento. They were the goal contributors in the semi. Ento scoring, Lewis assisting. And Nathan Richmond steps back on as well. Clemson substitution in the match number 25, Nathan Richmond, replacing number 10, Silla. Silla gets the break here. Striker that scored the second goal. Smart, can't keep it in. Let's see how deep they want to play. Bryce Beno in this situation, bringing Wyatt Lewis onto the pitch. And one would imagine it would be Lewis and Ethan O'Brien next to each other. That helps. Seen some fresh legs on the inside for you, but you still got to find a way to have that stepping stone like that playing off the nine. Play right back to him, and eventually, yes, Russo will get it. Pop off boy read it. Smart tracked it down first, though. Dangerous ball. Yeah, and it was turned, but not on the step, if you will. I know. Got four. O'Brien stays with it. Back to Russo. Dangerous ball play again. Trimnell just gets rid of it. We're under nine minutes. Commissioner Jim Phillips, ACC commish in the building, knowing that, yes, the ACC was going to win their third straight men's soccer Final Four this year. Clemson, Syracuse, and then was it Clemson or Notre Dame? As of now, the Tigers. Look like it will be them. Paris has passed too much. I let them know I need a new hat for the Lakes. I could use a new hat. Yeah, the blue one, it's, it's, it's weathered. Doesn't have a star above it like Chad Riley's, but it's, it's got some promise. Trying to 
Maintain a bat, four strikes! Man, how many have just been a whisker wide and a post has been hit? And the shape change, it's not always Lewis and O'Brien next to each other. Bono comes high, O'Brien starts to step with him. More pressure on the back line, more pressure on the midfielders. It does allow some of the width to develop. Just the overall execution, unfortunately, with seven minutes to go, hasn't been there for Notre Dame tonight. Still plenty of time. You say plenty of time, they do need two goals. Like, we've seen in teams pass with Chad Riley, they will go route one and put a big center back up there. Do you see that happening soon? You know you need two. Not right now, because again, they're just sticking with the idea with Patty Burns is going to be that swing pivot on the left hand side. Some of these balls, you got to clean them up. Tried to get to Burns, Lewis couldn't get enough on it. And Ramsey can't keep it in. No rush to get this throw in for Meinhardt. Guys, as much as we were talking about earlier, the Notre Dame bench feeling like a goal was on the tip of their tongue. This Clemson bench, every single player is on the edge of their seat or standing up. You can see the fan reacts right now. They know that this one's close. They are six minutes away and they can taste it as Meinhard just jogs and now he's walking off. Shabdarov says throw it in. They see it still hasn't cleared the pitch. Silla on it. What a fitting way for a young man to end his college career that's been outstanding. It's the last goal potentially in a college cup final. Graduates a week or so from now. Clemson degree. A young man that now COVID probably doesn't get to go to college. Ball played out wide to Burns. Played in, and Duquesne is back here to walk it off. Richmond over to Silla. He leaves it. Parrish. Parrish, that ball was questionable. Chabay looks back, but why would you play that? Great ball from Parrish. Smart's touch, not the best, but he's able to control it. His pass short to Silla. They turn it over again. Silla now running at the back line. Could be 2v2. Triple stays on side. Trimble takes a touch and eventually played out for a goal kick and he's down in a heap. Bo Williams, good recovery run and the clock will stop as Trimble's trying to get fixed. The boards are down behind the goal too. Just making sure that divot wasn't from his knee the way that he Jeez. went down into the pitch. Great closure by Mo Williams coming all the way back across. It does pop up because of him, but good news is no injury coming off of it. Under four minutes now. When the game ends, we will have the full trophy ceremony presentation over on ESPN Plus, so tune over there as we go off air. But we got 3.40 to go here. Notre Dame could pull a shocker. Shabdrov stops the clock again, too. Notre Dame fans hopeful something can change. And then Dana Play it long towards the corner. So they can scoop up a second ball. Back forward, trying to charge forward. Back comes Paris. Good tackle. And now he turns and gets it up to Silla quickly. Well done. Silla goes down I mean, there. With the, with the pressure, 
I understand that you're up too, but inside five minutes to go, the amount of chasing that Notre Dame is doing, it would be real easy as any player on this Clemson team knows how to close it out. They could just step on it. They could try and be selfish instead. This is what I was talking about earlier. Not changing. Not changing for anyone. Sticking to what got you to this situation. Let the ball do the work and just ping it around the park. Shaber goes into the book and he still has a word for Dimitar Shabdarov. And they're reviewing something now. We take a look. Now again, the review rules are simplified here. If you watched ACC soccer, some other conferences through the course of the year, there were experimental rules. This year, when it's interconference and in the championship, it's back to the standard rules of violent conduct. Let me take a look here. I assume that's what he's looking at, the vi or misidentification of a player in terms of a yellow card. We're not sure what Dimitar Shabdrov is looking at currently. Well, there was a challenge on Brandon Parrish prior to that, but another one there. Uh, I mean, still, at, whether it's a dive or not, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a foul. Yeah, we're, we're up and let's move on with it. But, and again, because these aren't the experimental rules. Okay, here's let's take a look here from before. Oh, oh, right there. Oh, that force the leg, out. little kick out. Okay. Oh, now they're going back and forth. So this is what they're looking at. Now Bono gets involved. He retaliates again. So this, because it's a disciplinary matter and potential violent conduct with the kick out, there's a lot to be looked at here. Javert's on the yellow. Is it anything further after the second one? Tackle, that is. I can tell you the last thing I'm doing is coming over and barking at the sideline of the official. I'm, yeah, it's I'm Adam, getting out of their mind. Adam Lunder, what a captain says, just you got to walk away, man. This is not this is not your fight right now. Don't talk you, your way into yeah, it. Yeah, you need to walk away. Adding a little more drama onto this. If anybody was dismissed in an orange jersey, would create a wild so last kick, three the minutes. Kick out from KK or KK as well. I mean, there, there's a question. lot to digest within this sequence. There was a challenge on Brandon Parrish prior, but right there. And that's a high stud. Unnecessary. So Jaber is just going to take the, that's the yellow, that's the final determination we're being told. And Jaber's asking now, what about the kick? But at this point, it's academic. It's been reviewed, it's over. And if I were anybody in orange other, other than Jaber right now, I'd be saying to him, hey, dude, we got three minutes for a national championship. Let, let it go. Stay calm, focused. Calm your nerves. Let's stay on the same path. And yeah. if you're Notre Dame on the other side of the things, hey, it's only three minutes, but it's three minutes. Three minutes. We Heads up. Try. We can do anything. And again, when these teams play, and I'll say it again, back in September, Clemson scored two goals in about 40 seconds to equalize the game. That was the end of the first half. But crazier things have happened. Silla looking for Trimnall. just plays it out. They will turn it over. Mike Newton looks at his assistant and says, really? Couldn't have kept possession there for a second. Four header by Jaber. Also the feet of Rue. Burns and Smart in a foot race. Great job by Sean Smart. That was a big tackle. One, two, Baffour charging. Falls to Lewis. Russo. Quiet for most of the second half. He's got a dangerous left peg, drives it, but out. Clemson is just over two minutes away from being the eighth team and only the fourth program in ACC history to win the ACC tournament and the NCAA tournament in the same year. Last time that was done was Carlos Samuano's 2011 UNC team. This is a Clemson team that was ranked preseason number nine, started the season 2-1-2, two, and two, fell out of the rankings for the next six weeks. Devin had a lot of people jump ship asking, what's wrong with Clemson? You were not one of them. You believed in Clemson really from the very beginning, and we're seeing it come to fruition right now. And now another stop on the clock here. And now Andema's going to get a yellow card. We're having an Oprah episode right now. 
And you get a yellow, and you get a yellow. Two minutes, number one, and you know, the eye test is is a lot of it, too. When you have the ability to see teams on a regular basis, Notre Dame included, you recognize the quality of play. Now, how much can you change in a good way as the year goes on? And the question coming in to postseason play for Clemson wasn't about what they could do on the attacking end. It was defensively could they solidify. Russo, good ball. Try to be flicked on with a back heel. Oh, Richmond, what a touch to bring it down. Couldn't get out of trouble, buddy. Oh, they called the foul on Richmond. Brian Dowd sprinting up right now. The quarter, the goalkeeper trying to get involved in this set piece. See him entering your screen. Shabdorov stops the clock. A minute seven now. Now you've also got Ethan O'Brien and Daniel Russo, who they can hit it from here. They had a similar one. It was on that little hash mark on the other side of the field against Oregon State. They didn't go direct to goal. Ethan O'Brien hit this little dink up over the top just behind the penalty mark. A lot of big bodies back there. Play short. Nobody on Bondo. Oh, that might be a handball, and it is! Hold the phone! That seemed like an obvious penalty, and that is it. Out, Tyler Trimnell slid in there, arm away from the body. We'll take a look, but the call is made, and you cannot review this. It's a pen. Class by Notre Dame to come back to the outside, and thought, Bri thought Bryce was going to try and cut this back, and instead, smartly, he understands all the bodies that are already in the box, and it's a penalty. Tyler Trimnell's hand, he knows it, far away from his body. And Damo has been, has been very good on penalties in tournament situations. In the ACC, they had two. Here's Burns, puts it away. This is going to be a nervy 60 seconds. Chick in the armor, certainly for Clemson. They are fallible, they are human, they have finally conceded. The handball, Tyler Trimnell, far away from his body. It's not the greatest of pens, but there's enough behind it for Patty Burns here to set the stage with a minute to go. Long ball played, Clemson went 449 minutes. Watch out, Tyler Trimnell, can he make up for the... Penalty, almost. If nothing else, that's going to kill a ton of time. Clemson went 449 minutes in this tournament off, giving up a goal in the final minute. They have it's made it tight, but that clock will wind. Just take this short and try to yeah, run it keep out Keep it here. in play. Play keep away in the corner. Have a little fun. We're under 30. Played short, 23. And he tried to play it off a Notre Dame player instead of holding it for a second. Here we go. You get one sniff at this. There is no stoppage time if you're new to college soccer. They have 12 seconds left, and that's it. That header's not going to get it done. The countdown begins. Offside. Clock will keep running. It, and Shavdarov, hold on. Never. He will, the clock will not keep running. He stops it now, and he's got a card in his hand again. That'll be for Silla kicking the ball away, not allowing this game. restart to happen. That's a massive mistake. And is the clock correct? Would be my first question if I'm on the Notre Dame sideline and everybody up here. And, and the fourth stay official on side. The fourth official, Aaron Hernandez, is holding the kick right now because he thinks the clock should change. He's they're relaying it right now. I would also say this ball is probably about 10 yards back from <laughs> where Brian Dowd just brought this thing up. Yep. Yes. Clock reset to seven seconds. We've seen this before in college soccer. The buzzer beater. Now, to your point, they did make Dowd back it up a good 10 yards. And the clock will start when he hits the ball. Could there be a miracle here at Lynn Family Field? Driven long. Headed out. In the last three years, the Tigers have done it twice. College Cup champs again in rarefied air. High expectations faltered early and forgotten about for a period of time, but they have taken home not one, but two trophies and now are four-time College Cup champions.